teeth. The teeth have mottling over most of the surface. He's been ingesting too much fluoride over at least six to seven years. Retired dentist Dr. Jeffrey Smith has waged an anti-fluoride crusade for two decades, believing young teeth have overdosed on fluoride. Even his own granddaughter has not escaped this controversial chemical. If she continues to be overexposed to fluoride for the next 25 to 30 years, it won't just be Jade's teeth that we're worried about. Dr. Smith's gathered evidence suggesting excessive fluoride not only discolors and deforms teeth, but can lead to bone disorders in later life. There is a very good chance they'll get osteoporosis and similar bone problems. They make it seem like you can never get enough of something like fluoride. It's such a good thing. Jennifer Hopkins' three children all suffer from dental fluorosis. Already the family faces a $10,000 procedure to reface 11-year-old Christopher's teeth. I nearly cried when they came through because we were so teeth conscious ourselves. It just says to me that someone hasn't done very much research. So where do we get our fluoride from? Well, we find it primarily in toothpaste, in tablet form as a dietary supplement, in infant formulas, and of course in our fluoridated water supply, consumed by 66% of Australians. When we turned on our taps to fluoridated water in the 1960s and 70s, we were told it would reduce the incidence of tooth decay. Well, Brisbane was the only capital city that refused to be part of the program, and it's still in that situation today, which means that after all these years, we can draw some interesting comparisons. Because in 1986, federal government data showed that tooth decay in Brisbane was exactly the same as in Adelaide and Perth, but in Melbourne, it was much worse. Now, before you suddenly say water fluoridation in Australia obviously has failed miserably, just hear what one of our top dental authorities has to say on the subject. The water fluoridation program in Australia is really the foundation of a terrific public health program. Now, Dr Smith. I want to see it suspended tomorrow. And scientist Dr Mark Diesendorf. Fluoridation is a failure. Worldwide? Worldwide. As the debate rages on, it's been left up to you. You either drink the water, filter it, or buy your own. But whatever you do, according to Dr. Smith, you're still at risk from an excess of fluoride from other areas. Fluoride toothpaste, fluoride tablets, fluoride mouth rinses, fluoride gels and paints. So have Australians been ODing on fluoride? Yeah, absolutely. According to some dental experts like Dr. Jeffrey Smith, our health authorities have known since the early 1930s that one in ten children could develop dental fluorosis just from drinking fluoridated water. And that figure leaps to one in four children when you add products like toothpaste and infant formula that contain fluoride. Which means, if Dr Smith is correct, right now up to four to five hundred thousand Australian children could be suffering from fluoride poisoning. What we have done with our fluoride program has been to use the best available information at the time and we're not ashamed to have to review it any public health program has to be reviewed from time to time dr robin woods australia's dental guru is in charge of our fluoride review he's the spokesperson for the australian dental association and is chairman of the dental health committee for the national health and medical research council the nh and mrc i have to question dr smith's figures until he has published his data in a scientific journal which is refereed and we have an opinion on it until that data is replicated by a second publication independently I really feel that you can't place too much reliance on it well not quite true because over the last 10 years Dr Smith has had 30 articles published here and overseas his concerns about fluoride are well documented but it seems largely ignored his concerns, for example, about infant formulas. Why, for the last eight years in the United States, has packaging clearly stipulated, do not mix in fluoridated water? Something needed to be done about it. So what are they doing? They have referred it to another working party. This is a very tricky chemical exercise. While we await the dental jury's findings on infant formulas, let's move on to something we all use every day, toothpaste. They say, um, oh, you don't brush your teeth and your teeth are brown and yellow. Lee Plummer's a victim of dental fluorosis. 
he's sick of kids at school telling him he doesn't clean his teeth properly. Fluoride toothpaste is uh, highly effective. Of course, it's a thousand times the concentration of, of fluoridated drinking water. Scientist Dr. Mark Diesendorf, a former research fellow from the Australian Institute of Health, is another thorn in Dr. Wood's side. He believes the NH and MRC should urge toothpaste manufacturers to provide strict warnings on packaging, on the risks to children. I think one should add the, the health warning that the Swedish Health Department gives on toothpaste packages, which is that uh, children under the age of four should not use fluidated toothpaste because they tend to swallow too much of it. And fluoride is, after all, a poison. <laughs> toothpaste advertising has generally shown liberal portions of toothpaste being squeezed onto a brush. It was always assumed whether you were five or 55, it didn't matter how much you used. Fluoride in fluoride gets into the enamel like liquid gets into the chalk. Oh, it does get in. So if it's been considered safe for children to use a full-strength fluoride toothpaste, why is it that Colgate Palm Olive have actually introduced a junior version with less than half the fluoride content? Could it mean that up until now, children have actually been overdosing on fluoride in toothpaste? We certainly believe our full-strength full toothpaste is fine for the whole family. We always have. The research is there to demonstrate it. So doesn't that suggest that prior to the introduction of Junior, children may well have been ingesting far too much of the full-strength toothpaste? No, we, we cannot accept the risk that you're putting forward because that risk is not supported by the studies. Ask Dr. Woods the same question and you get quite a different answer. Children have been using for the last 20, 30 years, fluoride toothpaste that has had double the concentration that is safe. I think I have to agree with you. Uh, but Does it not concern you? No, wait a minute. It doesn't concern me because you're not quite double the concentration which has been safe. Well, however much more it is, Dr. Woods is admitting children have consumed too much fluoride from toothpaste for decades. It seems Mr. Walsh may have also conceded there just might be a problem with fluoride. Dental fluorosis was due to too much fluoride in the system? Yes. So does the company accept that dental fluorosis is actually partly caused by fluoride in toothpaste? No, we don't. For many, that may seem as though Mr. Walsh has taken an each-way bet. So how safe has toothpaste been all these years? especially in the days when Colgate packaging carried this message. In the mid-60s, I understand you actually had a, a poison schedule warning on the side of Colgate toothpaste. Can you explain why? I've never seen the warning, but what I can assure you of is what I've said previously in the discussion, and that is that over the years, we have manufactured toothpaste that accorded with research. As most people will see it, Jeff Walsh resorts to the last line of corporate defense, research. Colgate isn't the only toothpaste manufacturer using fluoride, but are we any the wiser? With dental fluorosis on the increase, surely we need more warnings and better labeling on products. And there's more to come. Skeletal fluorosis, the growing incidence overseas of bone disorders and hip fractures attributed to fluoride. So from fluoridated drinking water to toothpaste, from fluoride tablets to infant formulas, they've all contributed to our fluoride intake. So how do we know we haven't consumed too much and it could be a health problem for us today or sometime in the future? Well, unfortunately, we don't know the answer to that question because sufficient tests and trials have not been conducted in Australia. And it's this that really concerns our fluoride opponents. If it's finally proven that the fluorosis problem has been exacerbated by negligence of health authorities, Dr. Smith predicts a rash of claims. He says in the UK, a group of parents is already suing a toothpaste manufacturer. And 44 members of the American Dental Association are apparently suing the association, who they claim have suppressed information on fluoride. Australia's 7,500 dentists have largely remained silent on the issue. Bound by professional ethics, one man we understand speaks for them all, and he offers his word to Australia. I can give them a guarantee that they have not been at grave risk because we have monitored this program every step of the way.